I'm an optimist because while we're facing this unprecedented set of constraints in food, in land, in energy, in water, all across the planet, with six billion people going to nine billion people all consuming resources, that really just represents a challenge. It's a challenge to humanity, a challenge to ingenuity, to innovation. What you begin to see is the writing on the wall that rather than the, this great threat to the global economy, what we've seen is a broad arc that really is now changing in the most fundamental way it has in a hundred years. Starting about 2005, we began to see a rapid run up in uh, energy prices, in uh, gold prices, in copper, aluminum, steel prices, all driven by the realization that two and a half billion people were going to enter the middle class and that there weren't enough resources uh, to go around. Uh, and that began to worry everyone, particularly around economic growth. What, how are you going to sustain economic growth when you have these kind of commodity prices essentially slowing the, uh, slowing the economy uh, down? And it began to change around 2010, 2011, when all of a sudden there, we began to realize that, hey, this high resource price thing may in fact be the beginning of a massive opportunity rather than the biggest threat to the global economy. It might be the biggest opportunity we've seen in maybe a hundred years. What we began to see was a set of trends that were moving very, very fast, that were in many cases driven by the combination of industrial technology and information technology. The, the most uh, striking one was the development of unconventional gas first, now unconventional oil uh, in the United States. This was something that no one saw uh, coming. We were sure in 2007, we were sure that the, world, that the United States was gonna be a massive importer of natural gas. We only had a few years left of natural gas and we're gonna to have to bring it in from all over the world. And by 2011, we realized that the U.S. was going to be the largest producer of natural gas in the world and had so much natural gas that we were going to start exporting it. In five years' time, what usually takes 50 years to develop, in five years, we all of a sudden were taken by surprise by this massive uh, uh, change. At the same time, we saw... Uh, solar prices going from $8 a, a watt peak down to $4 a watt peak, down to $2.50 a watt peak. That kind of change in the course of three or four years, again, took everyone by surprise. So two markets, the natural gas market and the solar market, both growing at 20% plus per annum. We are, in, ener in the energy world, we're used to markets that grow 3% an annum are really fast. And now we have two massive markets growing 20% per annum driven by the same underlying technological fundamentals. What's important to realize is that the technologies we're talking about changing in this way are really basic infrastructure technologies. And it's because of that they have this spillover benefit for the productivity of the economy as a whole. When we change the cost of a structure in housing or an office, that has a knock-on effect on all these industries that, have, that use or take advantage of buildings. When we change the economics or the resources required for transportation and for movement of goods, every industry that ships anything anywhere in the world benefits from that. When we virtualize a process to instead of physically moving a good, turn it into a service delivered over your phone or over the internet remotely, that again spreads to many, many industries from elevators to automobiles to mining companies. They're all now taking advantage of the fact that I can do things remotely. That's why it's very exciting. We're just at the beginning, the inception point of these new materials and new IT technologies beginning to affect many, many other industrial domains. The bringing together of information technology with industrial technology, the application of biological technologies to resource uh, problems, the use of new materials and nanoscale science to uh, these industrial and, and resource productivity uh, challenges, all of a sudden enables us to capture the kind of productivity growth that we need and more so that we can grow the economy while not actually increasing the d demand for resources nearly as significantly or while making the production of resources much cheaper than anyone uh, expects.